giving honor to God, Pastor Ray, Elder Williams, and the fathers represented here today. This presentation is entitled, My Father's Letters, Planting a Seed of Influence. I appreciate being asked to talk about my dad today and go through this exercise as it has helped me to see my dad in a new light. We used to write letters to each other. And so I pulled out all the letters and reread them all in preparation for this presentation. So my mom and dad met in Nashville, Tennessee, where I was born and where they both graduated from seminary school. They were both ordained ministers and my father served in the Methodist Church. My dad also served in the military. He was a pastor and a restaurant owner. Eventually my parents did divorce and my brother and I moved to Detroit uh, to be with my mom's family. My dad was 25 plus years older than my mom. And of course that was an issue for my mom's side of the family, if you can imagine. As a child and teenager, I had no clue uh, my dad was that much older. But one day as a young adult, I asked him how old he was because I recalled hearing rumblings and rumors about the age difference in their relationship. My mom was the baby out of seven children, so there were definitely some issues, as again, you can imagine. He never told me his age. He said, neat, that's what he called me. That should be no concern of yours. <laughs> I clearly remember that because I was shocked that he wouldn't tell me his age. I kept thinking, I'm an adult, but I didn't push it. So I didn't learn of his exact age until he passed away. And as a young child and teenager, those adult conversations I would overhear started to cloud and influence um, my opinions of him. However, I remained curious about him. So we maintained a long distance relationship through phone calls, visits to Nashville during Christmas, and most importantly, the letters. As a child and teenager, I was envious of my cousins and others who grew up in the household with a mother or father. But at the same time, I felt very special because it was fun to get letters from my dad, money, toys for Christmas, and chocolate bunnies in the mail for Easter. I confess, it was more exciting getting toys and money and clothes that came along with the letters. I would take a moment to read the letters, but quickly toss them aside, being a child and all. It was more exciting getting the toys. But around 14 or 15 years of age, I started keeping the letters. In these letters, he consistently encouraged my brother and I to, to do well in school, attend church, and read our personalized Bibles that he gave us. I graduated high school in 1990, and so I recently noticed all the letters I kept were from 1988 and onward. I think I became a long-winded writer of sorts for my dad's instruction in, in his letters. At the end of one letter, he wrote, P.S. You don't give enough information in your letters. Always give the date, Anita, the city from which you are writing, and the amount of money you received. So I reflect on Ephesians chapter six, verse four. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And so my thirst for knowledge and reading the Bible more at this time in my life was influenced by my father through his letters. He wrote, Anita, I'm very serious about you and John making the, best, making the effort to attend church each Sunday. Take time to read your Bibles, this will increase your knowledge in many ways, and God's blessings will be yours. So I also reflect on Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, which states, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I always wondered to myself why I wanted to pursue education and advanced degrees. After all, I grew up in a household where no one had a college education. But my dad wrote many statements like this in letters. I was glad to hear your interest in going to college. 
College is very serious business, but so many kids around Nashville are playing around. They don't realize college is an opportunity to make something of yourself, which otherwise you could not do. I will discuss this matter with you as time permits. Sometimes he could be very formal. <laughs> but I realize now that he planted the seed of motivation and determination to get a higher education. He wasn't physically present in my day-to-day -day life, but he had an impactful influence over me seeking God's word, working towards making God the center of my life, and education so I could become a productive Christian and self-sufficient woman. It's wonderful now to see my dad through the lenses of a 48-year-old child of God. That my dad did the best he could under the circumstances. He was a good father to me in many ways. He fathered me and influenced my decisions and life through his letters and generosity. And I know for sure he loved me and I made him proud. Fathers are not recognized enough. A good father recently said to me, it's Father's Day every day. I will never stop being a father. And I took that to suggest, and I encourage you fathers to always strive to offer and show your children the best of you. Maybe not today, but one day, like myself, when they become mature adults, they will come to reflect upon, appreciate, and cherish those positive moments and experiences they had with you. I reflect on Hebrews 12, verse 9 through 10. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as, as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. As I conclude, as a gift, I have a plant for each father represented here today and those that who may not be here but are represented by their wives. These plants symbolize the gift of life and efforts you make to provide nourishment and instruction to your children every day. I thank God for your A-class efforts and planting the seed of positive influence over your sons and daughters. And this one says, thank you for helping me grow. Thank you. Um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. And just a little tidbit about my dad. We didn't always have the best relationship growing up. It's just a lot I didn't understand. But I knew that he loved, he showed me his love in so many ways that I appreciate now. Um, so the poem reads, a dad is a person who is loving and kind and often knows what you have on your mind. He's someone who, someone who listens, suggests, and defends. A dad can be one of your very best friends. He's proud of your triumphs, and when things go wrong, a dad can be patient, helpful, and strong. In all that you do, a dad love plays a part. There's always a place for him deep in your heart. And each year that passes, you're even more glad, more grateful and proud just to call him your dad. Listening and caring and giving and sharing, but especially just for being you. So I would say happy Father's Day to my dad. And this is him now. Um, I had to grow as I grew in Christ. Then I understood that I was to love my dad in spite of what he may done, what he didn't do, but what he always did. And that was he loved me and I didn't want to be out of the will of God. So what I would say to everyone, um, the Bible tells us to love our dad. It didn't say what kind of dad he was. We love him. He loves us and let God take care of the rest. Amen. Happy Father's Day. And today, Newfound Hope Community Church starts a new tradition. And that is to intentionally set aside time to look back and remember and celebrate Juneteenth. That day, June the 19th, 1865, when 250,000 slaves in Texas were notified for the first time that they had been set free two and a half years 
previously. With this being our first official celebration of Juneteenth, our goal is to educate and raise awareness. And to that end, we have prepared informational sheets for you to help you initiate discussions about Juneteenth with your friends and family over the summer because we want the national holiday of Juneteenth to be more than just a day off from work, to be more than just a day when they don't deliver mail. We want it to be significant. And so if you didn't receive um, an information sheet when you came in, which I'm sure you didn't, we'll have these at the welcome desk on your way out, so please pick one up. And as you see, we have our photographer here today, so be sure and take as many pictures as you like in your brand new Juneteenth t-shirts and we'll distribute them later on.